Kings versus Pelicans tomorrow. Game seven, do or die, win or go home. Let's talk about it. First took away. Yes, with this picture, but it's worth it. Presented to you by the Birdsaw Law from the official injury lawyers of Propel Sock, located at 918 Poitras Street by the Superdome. Give them a call at 504 523 5413 if you or someone you know has been involved in the accident. The Birdsaw Law Firm, the official injury lawyers of Propel Sock, Lido and Chaz. And I believe five is coming in. How y'all doing tonight, fellas? It's all good. We'll be able to fuck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go. <laughs> I want to win tomorrow. I, I need to see the playoffs. I, that's <laughs> I need to see this team in the playoffs. And um, we're going to talk about it tonight. So uh, we're going to start off a little bit. I've been watching uh, a little bit different tonight. I've been watching the game we played against. Uh, what's up, Florin? Uh The game no, we played Florin. against the Kings without Zion. Um, and Lito and Chaz want to hear y'all's thoughts. So we're going to add this a little bit here to the stage. So kind of new here so work with me but um early on Lito the Pelicans made it a point to play through JV and y'all two have talked about this a lot JV loves playing against Sabonis like loves playing against Sabonis so tonight our first one of their first two possessions of the game uh, before you get started what what game is this what which one out of the series is this is the only game Zion didn't play so it was game like two or three I, I don't know why Zion didn't play um it might have been a back to back. I don't know. Uh, so, anyways, JV backing down, backing down, and the Kings elect to kind of play one on one there. Um, do you think that playing through early through JV will send doubles to Marlito? Do you think the Kings will want just a bonus to play one on one? Nah, I, I can't see them doubling. I can't see them doubling. There's no, there's no real reason. To it looks double. like Murray's coming down there, but I mean, I, I don't know that. I think, I think, yes. I think in this game, but I, but I, I just, I, I mean, unless Jonas is going to give him like forty points, I can't really see them. I think they'll rather just. I think you got to live with something, right? Zion is out. Brandon is Brandon is back. Uh, CJ is probably not going to score nine points. Um, I don't think that you could probably. I don't think they're going to double Jonas. I, and I think in the matchups that Jonas played against him this season, he's averaged fourteen and eleven. Um. I think all double doubles. Yeah, all double doubles. I think it's a good I think it's a listen, if the Pels play to the advantage that they have with Jonas, um even not having Zion, it should result in a win. Um, you know, as always, the question is how long will they stay with it? How long will they stay with that that game plan of doing it? I still don't think that they will double. I think they'll they'll live with the result of just getting beat by Jonas. Oh, Chad, you think early on, you think early on I should go through Jonas? Um, because look, the Kings want to go on track meet. You don't have Zion anymore. I mean, what are your thoughts on that going early on into Jonas? Um, it depends. Uh, I think in this, this game you're citing, it was a, it was like a blowout from the start. So yeah, it's really difficult to tell how much they really played through Jonas. I, I just think Sabonis has come up so small versus this Pel- the Pelicans this year that. It would seem like the smart play, but what up, five? What's up, the, what's up, y'all? What up, five? Nothing much, man. Just here in paradise. The the most the most logical thing to me is that okay, they're making a big no- deal about Brandon's reemergence, and so I think they go they try to play through Brandon early and often. And uh, if I'm the Kings, I I let them do that. I let them. I let them do their thing, and then as the game goes on, I start the trapping. Then I start making you play through Jonas. Like I, I you know, I kind of switch up the coverage, but um, I don't think they play through JV to start personally. Okay, so five join the show, uh, Jared. We we kind of showed an earlier possession. We're just simply getting into Jonas, and they played one on one. Um, we gotta take the comments. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> um, so this was um late second quarter Jared and it was a step up screen from Jonas it looks like they're gonna double Brandon here kind of get back and then they draw two right so Brandon does his job here as you see the spacing Dyson in the corner I don't think you're gonna see either Dyson or Hawkins in the corner tomorrow but if this is CJ and Trey you're playing four and three what, what are your thoughts on this just high PNR um, I mean second yeah you would like to see this late in four four quarters if that was you know and have the ideal guys in, in the correct 
place. I mean, you got good spacing from CJ, which I, I think that's uh, – I don't know who that is that, for the Kings that's uh, playing two-on-one on the backside. But that's uh, Mitchell. That's Oh, the white dude? They, no, no, no. It has to be Davion. All right. Yeah. So, so he's caught, you know, in between a rock and a hard place. He has to make a decision on where he goes. And I think Brandon, what, skips this to Dyson, if I'm not yeah, mistaken? Yeah, skips it to Dyson for three. I mean, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, that's the right play. But also, I still think, like, okay, you need to have the right person in the corner to shoot it. I'm not saying, like, Dyson can't make a three. But, I mean, if they're going to if they're gonna trap you, you want to have guys to, to make people pay for, for trapping. So I thought about this uh, five. Let me run it back here real quick. Okay. Imagine this is in JV. Imagine Herb setting the step up screen. They trap Brandon. Now you got Herb going downhill, CJ in one corner, Trey in the other corner with JV in the dunker. Yeah. We've been talking about this at nauseum, you know, probably since the first, thank God we can, you know, put video shout out to you for getting this together, but that would be perfect. That's ideal. That's putting Herb in the Draymond, Draymond Green S role, right? Going to play three on two, four on three downhill. And he's a good passer. Drop it off the JV, get a layup. You would hope, right? You have, but also the, the guys guarding CJ and Trey, now they're out of position. Like, you're going to leave those guys open in the corner? That's a layup for CJ. That's a layup for Trey. That's what you want. So then, Lito, back to this, me another high PR. And right off the bat, okay, Jared talked about getting guys in the right spots. Why wouldn't Dyson right be in the right corner? Why wouldn't he be where CJ is and CJ back in the right corner? If if you want to put your two best shooters, you would have Hawkins on one side and CJ on the other instead of he got him spaced out. Um, I'm hoping tomorrow this could look something along the lines of either JV or Herb setting the step up screen because here's what's going to happen. They're going to double, and now here it is. This is your advantage here because now you got him out of position. Barnes just, I mean, that's we know Dyson's on a shooter, still kind of closes out pretty weak. Dyson hits the floater. Is that stuff like you can just if run? I'm, if I'm, it, depending on who's on the floor, if that's Dyson, if Dyson's on that side of the floor, if he's on the strong side of the floor right there, um, and I get him to take that floater, I'm a, That's a win for you. If I'm the Kings, I'm 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 winning like that. You can have he can have that shot anytime he wants to shoot that shot. Now, now if if Hawkins is there, or if you put Matt Ryan there, or Trey or CJ, CJ, right? I think you know then that that then you get the scramble drill, right? Like right. people are gonna people are gonna uh, come off their spot to um. Try to guard that. Try to guard the extra guy, but as you saw, like nobody, even 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 go run it back one more time. Yeah. Just look at the look at the reaction of Dyson. Like he's like, oh, okay, close out. Nope, gonna go, gonna go into that. You know, actually, Hawkins had a uh, they close out on Hawkins in this game. He had initially like easy two hand dunk. Um, but you got to think tomorrow that's not going to be Dyson per se. It's going to be CJ or Trey, which, which God can only hold Justin because Brandon should be your facilitator tomorrow. I mean, clearly they're going to double them. And if they switch, you're going to win with those, you're going to live with those results as well. I don't know what this floater though. That was, <laughs> that was quite <laughs> the bench reacted. Uh, five. I also like this. Actually, we talked about this, but if, when Larry comes in, you see how some bonus is playing him. So if we can just run a shooter off. Sorry. So if you run a shooter off like CJ, you can get this wide open too. Yeah, and I think it, it also helps that Hawkins is the, the release guy, right? Like, so you have to stay home. Malik Malik Monk has to stay home, right? Like he really right now he's he's caught in between because one, just Jordan Hawkins being out there forces him to like stunt. And for CJ, that's it's a layup. It's like you type of the key, a dribble handoff. I don't even think he takes a dribble, if I'm not mistaken, and, and pulls. Like, that's kind of what you want. It's because if you put, say, if you put Dyson in, in Jordan Hawkins' spot right there, like Malik just going to help. Like, right? Like, CJ doesn't get this clean look. Okay. Like, the, where guys are positioned matters. Like, where they are in the offense matters. So, 
having the right people in the right place is, and we're talking about this in game 84, like that shit matters to a high degree. And essentially you saw the Lakers do the exact same thing over and over and had guys scrambling. Like what will the Pelicans do get to get the Kings in rotation uh, time in, time out? Yeah, uh, I was really good points because I've been in my notes file. I have Herb as a screener, and I think it makes so much sense, especially if you're going to easily send two at, at Brandon, like that, like the Kings have done. I think in all their matchups. Um, so I think her. Like, my next question here is, you know, Lito, I'll start with you. Who's who's the biggest X factor for the Pelicans tomorrow? The biggest. I mean, it's got to be Trey. It's got. Okay, go ahead. Why? It's got to be Trey. I mean, you you lose um <clears throat> you lose you lose Zion's scoring ability, um, his ability to create matchups and 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 you know kind of dissect the defense and kind of you know di- di- uh, Dyson Zion does this. He has his ability to make the defense uh, acquiesce to whatever he wants to do. And you <laughs> and you you don't you don't have anybody else on the team that can do that. You know, teams are teams are gonna be teams are gonna be willing to let uh Brandon take these tough tools. That, that that's fine. Teams are gonna be okay with CJ, you know what I'm saying, shoot taking his dribble pull up midi. However, if Trey's on the floor. He can keep everybody honest. Um, he he can still. I know. I was talking to my partner earlier about Trey being the screener, and he has some valid points. Like he doesn't see that for Trey as far as like Trey's NBA body right now. He doesn't have the. He doesn't have the. He doesn't have that ability to set that screen and hold the spot, which is probably why the Pelicans don't allow him to to do that. But I think. One of the things that I've been seeing from Trey later on in the season is his ability to relocate in spots. Yes. Like last year Definitely he was better. he was just standing. If the play wasn't for him, it was going elsewhere. He he would he would stand at a spot and he was <laughs> fifty five pages five. He was he was not he was not gonna make himself involved. It's kind of like Justin we were talking about with the Zion thing. Like yeah, they're not gonna call a play for you, or they're not gonna they're not gonna help you. So right. then what? Do you just do you just do you just uh, you do nothing? And, and shout out to Trey for finding a way to make itself applicable applicable to the game plan. Yeah, um, Chaz, who's your biggest X factor for the Pelicans tomorrow? I'm bad. I want to say uh, either CJ or her. Just depends on if CJ runs out of gas or not. Um, You've been talking about it forty minutes, been longer, a lot of minutes. Yeah, just take the night off, CJ. Um, but her her's been pretty not spectacular on the offensive end, like the probably the last month or so. So if he um if he has a better than average night, I think that's something <laughs> it's kind of like at this point, it's kind of about like the rising tide kind of lifting all boats and having some balance. Cause I just I <laughs> I don't see Dyson going like six for six again. <laughs> like cert- certain things. Fox like, won't score three points. <laughs> yeah, Fox won't score three points. And I mean, and like Kings, they really hurt. So you got no Malik Monk, no uh, Kevin Herter. Um, so I-, I-, I think the Pelicans should win this game going away, honestly. Uh, I just think uh, if Herb has a one of those three, four, three nights, you know, for Herb, I think um, – that or CJ has another crazy seven of ten night. Both things are very possible. I think the Pelicans win this game going away, based on those two guys. Five, go ahead. My bad. Muted. My bad. I was mute. Yeah. Um, I think it's hurt. Um, I guess Chas's point. He had a really good game against the, the Lakers. The first game just got overshadowed because he got the ass whooped. Right. I think him and Zion were the only two players really to show up to play. He was four for seven from three. Um, and it, to be honest, I watched him warm up. He looked pretty good, um, even in the second game. Um, I just think he'll be asked to create in the – he'll have to be asked to create in the half court. And I think that's where 
he has some some issues at times, right? When there isn't like a play call, like that's why you you can't just give him the ball and ask him to create off the dribble. It has to be in some kind of action, um, right? Like have him scream. I actually want Trey to scream. I don't give a fuck if his body is made for it. Pause. Like like no, because they try to do like the the flare screen or the ghost screen so much. No one's no one's jumping it because you never actually scream. You know, right. it's right. You know, like, <laughs> no, no one's right. like, uh, like they know you're gonna do this. You're running, you're just running by. Like no one's like, up. Oh, you're just doing the same thing over and over. You have to actually eventually have a counter. Usually that's the counter. But for the Pelicans, it's inverse. Like you actually have to set the screen, and then people will react to it. Right. Right. Like oh shit! Now now you have a shooter that's screening, and picking and popping. That that can space the floor from what you know, somewhat sometimes like forty feet from the rim, and now you, now the defense actually has to make a decision. So even to that, I still think Trey, I mean Herb is the guy we have to look for as a, as an X factor. But I can see Trey Murphy and Herb kind of like be interchangeable there. That's fair. Um, Who you think that side is? I think it's Brandon Ingram. He's got to play good. He don't play good. We're gonna lose. Tell you that listen, much right now. He's got to play good. Listen, he can't be a X factors don't what X can't be a mad guy and be like, yeah, 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 it's, it's like, like land, it's like yeah, it's land, yeah. Like point. he's supposed like yeah, he's supposed to be the guy. X right. factors are guys that well, all right, fine. Um yeah. fuck. I want to say something crazy, but like I know he's just not gonna play, but he deserves to play in this game. It's Jordan Hawkins. Jordan Hawkins should play this game. He's played. He played every other Kings game besides the last one. Mm. Like you, like I'm telling you right now, the Kings get out to a 15, 10, 12 point lead. You're gonna need offense. You're gonna need offense. And Lito, I think I tagged you in that like quote you said the other day at the All Star break. Like you're gonna need to play Jordan Hawkins because he's gonna need to play in the playoffs or postseason. The only the only pushback I give, I mean, I want Jordan to play. Don't get this twisted. The only pushback I give is gonna be a it's gonna be a Kyra Lewis moment where you've oh, iced the God. guy for you know a month now. No, and, it's more than a month. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, like what are we this it's criminal? Like you're gonna put him in and you know what? He be the motherfucker to show up. Oh no, for sure. Oh no doubt. No doubt. It's not like a I don't have faith in him. But to put a guy in that fire, he'd be the, like that's a dude you want to be in a foxhole with, right? Because he about shooting whatever, like he don't care. I've seen him go, you know, have this terrible game. What was that early on in the season? Guys are hurt. He was like, oh, nah, fuck it. I'm Dallas. Shooting. The, no, Dallas, no, 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 no. not the one he won. Oh, he went like he went like three of eighteen. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he was the only one that was going to shoot. Like, I can respect. I can respect that shit. I can respect the guy, yeah. like going out on his shield. Rather than like you know carrying up, uh, you only know one way. Hey, do y'all think? Do y'all know anything about Najee? Like why he didn't play? Like do you think he's actually like really hurt? Yeah, um, I, I I think there has to be something there where Najee, like he's kidding. just like like he's just an emergency maybe. Like I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. He didn't, I don't think he looked great in that. What was that? The uh, yeah, when he was, came back. What was the game he played? I, was it? Chaz, what, no, Portland, I think. I think it was Portland. He got a layup. And I'm like, man, he don't – it didn't look like himself. You know what I'm saying? Even he, Although he scored in transition, he just didn't look like Najee. Well, the reason I'm saying this is, okay, so Najee's hurt. Dyson, if he's not giving you all, any offense and the Kings are scoring at will, you can't play him. Trey's starting. Larry, once again, if you're getting down, like it doesn't make sense to play him. I know he's going to play. Uh, who else do you turn to? Cody Zeller, Matt Ryan, Jordan Hawkins. At that point, you need a four. You probably play like at that point, you're talking about a big wing. So they probably play JRE. You said Larry Nance already? Yeah, I said Larry Nance. But I but dude, you can't have Larry. Oh man. Yeah, I'll play Hawk. All right. I'm not. <laughs> they go, it's um, JRE, I love no. Justin's optimism. Like, it's just, it's just... like I want them to should just, you should have just played him, and there's no point of just benching him. It, that will that will always drive me crazy. Like the one thing that really pissed me off this year was Jordan Hawkins. 
Because he, I, it, like, it, okay, man, like, if he was, like, he's a rookie. He's going to be bad defensively. I got, like, fucking breaking news to a lot of people. He's going to be bad defensively. Throughout I, the year, he's gotten better. And also, we all agree, he's one of the best rebounders on the team. Like, watch him go get a rebound. He goes get he goes and get it. But I, offensively, he he gives you something that you don't have on this team. I I don't I don't I'm not I don't think you're wrong, and I don't want to step on my take from earlier. But I think that bro, not Najee and Jose just played too good this season. Oh, shit, you have Jose. I can't wait for Jose. Yeah, Jose's they, back. They He's played. Like, they yeah, played, Jose. Jose played, played too good. too good. But you still team. don't think you could have found minutes for him at all? I mean, I personally think you could have, but I don't think those coaches. It's like an all or nothing scenario with them if 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 it's it, it, it's no fractional minutes you go get Jose deserved it because he's been playing well yeah he did Najee yeah. deserved Najee deserved it too yeah no I mean you're right I, no 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 see this is this is my issue it isn't a Jose or Jordan Hawkins or Jose or Najee or Jordan Hawkins thing I I watched the Dallas game I saw Jose Jordan Hawkins JV be impactful in a game together in a, in lineups, so don't tell me that they couldn't play together, right? It, it against you know they were going against Tim Hardaway who had four. I think Tim Hardaway had no, I don't think he had the forty second point game. game he had second, a 40 game. but Kyrie still had thirty something, right? Like Jordan Hawkins outscored Kyrie. Like defense doesn't necessarily like win you championships anymore. Like that mantra is no longer. Like again, the Pelicans again are going to be six rated, six rated defensively, and may not make the playoffs. So at some point, you have to understand it can't be all defense. It can't be. Um. So I can see a, a lineup where Jose and Jordan Hawkins play together because I've seen it, and it be successful, especially with Jose shooting the ball as well as he has over the last twelve to fifteen games. One of the best lineups that uh, Pelicans had, like through the All Star break, was a Dyson Jordan Hawkins uh, backcourt. It's like one of their best lineups. Um, so anybody coming back looking at forty six hundred for Red Street? So make sure y'all smash that like button. Of course, we'll be live after the game tomorrow. Um, Lido, who's more important to stop, De'Aaron Fox um, or Sabonis? Appreciate the new uh, membership, and yeah, also Thank you. appreciate it. Uh, go ahead, Lito. So one more time. Who's more important to stop tomorrow, Fox or Sabonis? <laughs> um, who's more important to stop? Sabonis. Sabonis is. Go ahead. <clears throat> I mean, he he's he's um. He's a multifaceted player. Um, he's a guy who, I mean, I think he leads that team in assists too, right? So he leads the he leads the team in assists. He leads the team in. I don't know if he leads the team in scoring, but he's he's you know he's at least getting twenty, and he's leading the team in rebounding. He's a guy you gotta be a you gotta you gotta be accountable for, which would be a good thing if the Pels open up the the game to attack him. You know, the the more the more you attack a player like that, the better. I, I I hate I hate to see, and I don't mean to go off on a tangent, but I hate to see like I hate to see when a guy, for instance, like Brian got it going, right? And because Brian Brian, at some point, people just stop attacking him because you're whatever reason, I don't know why. Like you gotta make the other guy play defense. And that's the one thing Sabonis cannot do. That and shoot beyond 15 feet but you gotta make him you gotta make him play defense if, if the Pels are smart they they should look at how go uh now they don't have a player to to implement this in in like Draymond no, no diss to her but I'm just saying like Draymond has the the ability to match up with Sabonis damn I I, I tiptoed through that whole mind fell like I, I feel like I did like you know what I'm saying anyways they don't have a player to they don't have a player to match up with him like that, um, stature wise. But if you watch how they guarded him, it's kind of how teams guard Zion in a different 
it's the same but different. As you know, you know, Sabonis want to go. He wants to get to his left hand also, and he wants to shoot shots around the rim. But if you look at how Draymond and Looney pretty much built the wall, and they forced him to take free throw line jumpers on back, it totally changed that whole series. And the Pels only got to win one game, even though this would be the sixth win. And you know, I don't never heard I've never heard anybody say good things come in sixes, but. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, <laughs> but but if you if you just a little wrinkle, like if you add that to the defensive game plan, I think I think that could I think that could that could do well for you. Chaz, who's more important to stop, Sabonis or Fox? <laughs> I'm gonna say Murray. Thank you, Murray. Yeah, I he's never. Anytime he's had like a great game, they've won against the Pelicans specifically. Um, I thought they did a pretty good job neutralizing him the last time. Fight Herb, especially fighting over screen. Um, <laughs> but I think it's going to be uh, – I think I think it has to be Keegan. Fox, I'm not worried about Fox because at, at the end of the game, like Fox will shoot you out of it. Like I want Fox with the ball at the end of the game. So bonus is soft. Like I, I'm not really too worried about him. But uh, like to me, the Kings, their number one advantage is their pace – and their ability to get up a lot of threes. So if you got guys like Keegan Murray, Keon Ellis getting up threes and they're making threes, Harrison Barnes, then I think I think that's when things get uh get tricky. So I'm gonna say Keegan. Who who starts on Keegan Murray tomorrow then, Chaz? I hope they put um I'm trying to think who's starting. I right, who the worst defender. I hope they put Trey. I hope I hope they put Trey on him because I want Keegan to go off. I want I want Keegan. <laughs> I want Keegan to drop 75 tomorrow. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Five. Who's the uh five? Who's the X Factor tomorrow? Or who's I'm sorry. Uh who's more important to stop? Fox or Sabonis or whoever you want to say. Come on, on. Come on. Um, Come on. Mike Brown. Mm. I think I think this is another game where like you're gonna have to do something and stop what they want to do. Um they have confidence now. Like, I think just I think beating the Warriors gives them a certain confidence because they've been beat by them too many times. And to to almost like they put the nail in a coffin against the Warriors, it just like nothing else matters to them at this point. Like they're just playing with house money. Like they can go into the offseason like we knock them motherfuckers off. But if they can get in the playoffs, it gives them some sense of some semblance mm. of like success. Right, like we back get that. In. you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's been a tough year for them in, in the grand scheme of things. Like they had like Malik isn't there, right? Like they could have been good, but they were they're one win off their last year's pace. So it just at this point, like they aren't who they thought they would be. But I think they're gonna come into this game with a lot of confidence. I think Keegan Murray is seeing this as like, yeah, I could be the second or third option like truly because from the beginning of you know the the golden state game he was super confident everything like he was at the rim or he was shooting like it didn't matter um but i think mike brown is a key component in that like he instills confidence in his players although fox be fucking up he did he didn't he's not taking the ball out of fox's hands i think that still gives people confidence um man i don't know who y'all talked about who guards Keegan. I think it should be Brandon. To be honest, I think the length may give him trouble. So um, Trey gets bar- so then Trey's on Barnes. Yeah. I rather that Trey isn't although he um he's athletic, he isn't like quick, right? Laterally, which right. is odd. It's just super odd. The fact that Trey can jump so high, but left and right, he is borderline terrible. Now, what he can't do is go under screens on Harrison Barnes. You can't do that. But I'd rather him, you know, make Harrison shoot rather than allowing Keegan to shoot, if that makes sense. Because Trey goes under or accepts too many screens. So yeah. I think putting Brandon with the length Brandon has gives Keegan a little bit more trouble than it would if Trey was that person. Garden. You know, besides Dyson and Herb guarding – um fox tomorrow is there any other defender you'd want to see on him or is it just those two guys 
I don't I mean no, nobody else on the team plays defense, so um they, like do you think a Jose could get on Fox? I mean I think he could I think he has the ability to play defense on him. Now how well how well his defense would be, I don't I mean I don't I, I think he would provide a little bit of a of a problem for Jose simply because of the 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 stature um and his foot speed like I'm not saying Jose's slow but Fox is in the end he's like a Ferrari um and I think you know if I'm not mistaken I think Fox started y'all could quote me if I'm wrong on this but I think he started posting Jose up like he he started catching it at the elbow no <laughs> who the fuck Somebody was maybe okay. Wait, wait, wait. five. My bad. I'm, I'm, re- I'm reading this fucking question at the bottom line. Oh my god! Wait, what? No, that's crazy. Yeah, that was that was crazy. Um. <laughs> anyways, I, I just don't. I don't. I don't think that. I don't think that that would be a a, a long term solution to guard Fox in 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 Jose. I think Jose probably does better on Keegan Murray than he would on Fox. Yes. Yes. Like, yes. Fox is just as quick, probably quicker <laughs> than Jose. Like I don't think he's stronger than fox fox loves to get in the paint like jose does better on guys that want to shoot rather than get to the rim like d like he'll he'll be able to guard d because d wants to shoot he's not trying to get in the paint so i nah i, I wouldn't do that so Zion goes down uh last segment of the show so we haven't talked about this as a as a, as a group so uh chad start with you Zion goes down um who knows if he comes back? Uh, still not really clear what grade level this train is. I see the Twitter doctors are out, which I think is insane. Um, kind of highlighting everything. What did you think overall? If he, if that was his last game of the year, overall, what did you think of him this year? Um, I think he uh kind of showed improved in this going into the second half of the year, and he uh. Finished it in dramatic Herculean uh, fashion. Um, I think it leaves you with a – I feel like everything is a bit of a lose-lose if you're a spectator or, like, a supporter of the team. It's a win-win if you're the organization because you got built-in excuses, you know what I'm saying? But if you're a spectator, you're like, well, shit, look, how much more do I need to see? Like, this guy, you know – Again, above, he was on his way to – this is the second time he was on his way. Even when he got hurt the first time, he he killing the 76ers, pulls a hamstring. So this season, I think he's like maybe like eight, uh, nine and five or something like that when taking over uh 20 shot attempts. You know, shit was about to be 10 and five potentially. So I, I just think you you've seen enough to kind of designate him as your number one option. Um, and to me, the goal was, I right, just don't go into the off season injured, like real injured surgery, injured, fucked up. So to me, I don't consider this one of those injuries. Um, I just saw what's, what's old boy. Um, the dude, man. Oh, Booker. I just saw Booker pull his hamstring not too long ago. So as long as it wasn't no crazy, wild freak injury, surgery, injury, I ain't really tripping. I, I just think, uh. I'm just ready to uh, get to this off season. <laughs> Leo, thoughts on Zion Williamson overall, and then obviously that Lakers game. I mean, I think he had a. <clears throat> I think the start he had a he had a bit of a uh, up and down season. Um, he had a slow start, per his standards. Um, I didn't. I I don't think he really got to find his actual footing until uh, after New Year's. Um, and then from that point, cause you know, you had the statements of, you know, I'm just trying to figure it out. I've been taking a backseat. Da, da, da. He said himself, he didn't come in the season. He didn't come into the season in the particular shape or have the cardio that he wanted to have to start the season. <clears throat> he shouted out CJ for, uh, taking up the mantle in his absence, not necessarily his own court absence, but you know, he wasn't, he wasn't in superstar mode. He wasn't in like. He didn't have superhero uh, abilities yet, and I think I think that um, I think from that point, 
I don't know what happened after All Star break. I mean, excuse me, after New Year, but he he started to look more like himself. Because uh, for, for early in the season, like it, it looked like some of his athleticism, not to say it was gone, but it was kind of um, it was kind of he just didn't look like himself. But I want to give a, a, a give kudos to him because he 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 pretty much ended this season <laughs> how he ended last season. You saw the heroic performances against uh, Phoenix. You saw the heroic performances against um, the Timberwolves. You saw what he was about to do to the Sixers, which in that Sixers game was the first time that whole season that a JV Zion pick and roll happened, and then he got hurt. But anyways, I want to I, I want to give a shout out to him for being comfortable enough in his game to start doing things to take him out of the norm of his comfort zone. He started shooting more middies. He started taking threes. He started shooting floaters. He started doing things that, you know, a complete basketball player does and not just relying on scoring for one particular point on the floor. Um, Man, get well soon. You know, I know it sucks for us, but, you know what I'm saying, imagine how the fuck he feel, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, Five I thought Leo said something interesting though. It was like it may they went in shape or tip top shape coming in the years. Is this something that it looks played 70 games? Most I'm guessing it's the most he's ever played. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, it's the most he's ever played. Um, you know, the offseason can still get better. He can still show up in better shape. There are certain there's there are a lot of things that he needs to work on. For me, screening and rolling. Should be top of the list there, but also we've seen the jumper. Um, what would you like to see Zion work like? What does he need to come back with next year if he doesn't play again um, during this off season? Well, let me let me grade him. I think I think Zion has a B for me this season. I think Zion learned a lot about himself this season more than anything. Um, I think having CJ for a year. You know, I think was it year three for CJ here? Year, no, year yeah. two for no, year three. Two, right? well, two and a three. half. Two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like I think that was a, that's a big component of consistency for Zion, just having somebody that he actually can like entrust himself into, right? Like giving him like, yo, bro, I ain't got it. And somebody be like, nah, bro, it's all right, I got you. And actually prove it. Right? Like actually go out and prove it. Um and you know zion had to get to the point where he trusted himself and they talked about the work off the court but i think he found a regiment that worked for him finally right like you you saw him be able to be comfortable and you know we we see the jumper at the end of the season just thinking about the lakers game like we saw the facets of zion improving throughout that game yeah being able to finish over a big being able to think the game. I think he thought the game very Backdoor well. Cut. Backdoor cut on LeBron. I hadn't seen it all and year. I, and I think his his um, decisiveness or his effort throughout the entire game is the reason why LeBron was dog shit tired at the end of the game, right? Like Zion had more energy than LeBron, as he should. He's, you know, almost like half his age. But at this point, like Zion – was about to do the thing that LeBron did, you know, for the last 21 years, come back on the team, finish and, and, and do something that you hadn't, you had seen him do. He scores 40 points in his first postseason game. Like, and to, to see him get injured on that last, you know, the, 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 what the last three minutes of the game is, is tough, but it also gives me like, okay, maybe he knows something now. Maybe he understands like, I can't come into the next season out of shape. I have to get myself better in the summer. I have to work on my mid range. I have to work on my catch and shoot threes. I have to work on screening. Maybe he knows that now. I just wish they surround him with another person that can actually teach him the things he needs to know to get better. That, that I think we missed that part a lot. Like Stan Van Gundy is probably the only one that could have done it out of the three coaches he's had. But he needs somebody else to like take his game, like to push Zion to the next level. He needs it. So then what's 
If you had to choose between the three things you just listed, though, what's the most important thing he needs to come back with beginning of the year next year? The most important, I, mean, I think, strength. Like, right? Like, strength. Like, not, you know, buffer. No, like, like, but I just think, like, strength and conditioning is the, the one thing that's most paramount, right? Like, he needs to be in, like, physical shape to play withstand an 82 seat 82 game season zion needs to be mid-season form the first day of the season can i can i um speak on that as well yep i think i think it's attitude i think zion needs to come back as arrogant as possible mm-hmm. and i think i think on media day if, if if number 14 is across from him get on the phone with your agent bro I need out. I want out. Though, let me out. Like, just, just let me out. Because all this is for naught. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because it don't matter what he do. <laughs> like, it don't matter what he do. They not interested in being in the business of Zion. Motherfucker took 15.9 shots this year. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Was that a career like, low, I'm guessing? Yeah, it, it's a career low. It's funny. Guys, coming off of injury, of course we know he's not he, he certainly wasn't, you know, in shape to start the season. Still was the best player on the team. Like, all of these things, not put in position to succeed throughout the season, questionable attitude, questionable buy-in, um, you know, a couple of blunders, still the best player on the team. Like, which I, I don't I, – truthfully, I don't really know what more the dude could do, bro. Like, I, I, I really don't at this point. I, I just think – uh. It's kind of you kind of need to embrace the inevitable if you're him, if you don't start pushing the line attitude wise, if you don't have a different mentality. Like, I don't I forget who posted it, but it was like, oh, man, this was six days ago. And it was him and Zion and Trey. And for certain one thing he said in that interview that didn't really get picked up by like the national media. Nothing was like, oh, you know, look at all these weapons I got. Yeah. Like, you know, he's like, I'm like, oh, now if you were the arrogant person, you might be like. I'm not one of your weapons, motherfucker. I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm an equal. But it's like, no, you're not. <laughs> you you wanna. This goes for everybody, though. I'm not talking about just Brandon anybody. I'm talking about everybody. It has to fully, for the first time, for the first time in five years, if you you need to fully embrace the Zion Williamson era for the first time, and he has to demand that. If he ain't going to demand it or, you know, you're not going to bring in an advocate, another advocate for him, like a not Rondo, of course, but Rondo type personality who's going to advocate for the best player, then oh, I, don't, I don't really care if he come in with Kyrie handles and a jumper like stuff because it's not going to matter. 16 shots, what you better make, he better make every one of them motherfuckers for that. Like, it, it's nothing's going to matter. Like, you know. Yo, I think – um. I think both of those answers are good uh, from Chaz and F Five. I think for me, I agree with <laughs> I agree with both. I think you got to add like plyometrics, you got to add yoga, you got to add you know what I'm saying those type of things. But also, yeah, man, you got to rebrand your attitude. You really gotta you really gotta rebrand your attitude with like I'm the guy. I, people have a problem with arrogance, um, but the, bless you. No, bless, you. bless you, my good brother. brother I mean, that's, the truth. that's the truth. Yeah, that's the you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, God don't make mistakes. That's Listen, <laughs> people got a problem with arrogance. But the thing is, nothing great has been done without some air of arrogance. Like, if you look at an arrogant person, it's usually like, like, how the fuck can you question me, X, Y, Z, because I did this. I am I am this person. I did that. Brian probably the most – LeBron is probably the most humble basketball superstar you ever going to see. But don't think for a second that Brian is humble. Like, he not, he not humble in that manner of it. It's just different. Like, bro, I, I think – you know, I know Zion, he loves Michael Jordan. I think he needs to mimic that motherfucker. <laughs> like, he needs to mimic him attitude-wise. He got to know – I'm. he got to walk in somebody's locker room and go in there and be like, who guard me tonight? And laugh. Him? Yeah. Are you serious? The crazy thing is Zion was doing that shit on the floor to the Lakers. 
He was talking so crazy to them. He, bro, Torian Prince was guarding him. He literally was laughing at him. He was laughing at him walking down the floor. He he got a, he he got the the dog the, the the thing that people say like it 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 it, it it's him. He got to do a better job of keeping the dog present. He got to do a better job of keeping the dog hungry. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to <laughs> yeah. see that. And 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 listen to Chad's point. You know, you know how they have compassion, leadership, all that shit in the arena. They need to hang one more. They need one more that says hierarchy, and that's going to be the most important one. Chaz, I was, yeah, Chaz, I was looking at field goal attempts for, throughout the year, like uh, league leaders. Mm-hmm. Terry Rozier averages more. <laughs> Tamar DeRozan, Miles Bridges, I know you didn't play much. Uh, Jalen Brown, LeBron James, Cam Thomas, Kyle Kuzma, DeJounte Murray, Kate Cunningham. And then your top 10 that lead field goal attempts for the years. Luca, Jalen, Fox, Maxi, SGA, Ant, Kyrie, Steph, Tatum, and Booker. Then Kevin Bro, the, the worst, The worst thing I did, I was saving this for like, you know, the next show or two I do is start doing like a deep dive on the stats and the numbers and breakdowns of the this supposed big three. Yeah, bro. Look, um let's uh, at some point it's just it's it's time to just stop playing games. You know what I'm saying? Like like we we arguing about who like who you know it, it's like I, I I'm trying to it's like being the, the tallest little person, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> Paul, I'm trying to be politically correct because I just saw Kobe White. I didn't see Kobe White just be incredible a bunch of times this season. And I'm talking about like incredible, incredible, incredible. Maxi, incredible, incredible. Um, guys who just like, who like this guy? Like, what where did he come from? Like, just in, incredible, incredible. And I'm like, I got I got two guys on this team that's in the big three that I can't make a hard down argument that they're better than those guys. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just tired. I'm tired of like this pretending I'm tired of being lied to, bro. It's like, look, man, I don't know which more, what more you need to see. I can see it. Like in Zion's most impressive games to me, one being, it's been about four of them. One was against <laughs> the Raptors. Uh, One, I'm talking about just throughout his career that I can, I can remember Raptors, Timberwolves, Timberwolves, no, it's five. Timberwolves, 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 Lakers. You got to do and, the Suns, then. then. Yeah, yeah. You got to have that Suns. Well, I'll, I'll say the Suns, but that's kind of this year. But I'll say the Suns, too. No, I meant uh, December when he did the, the Oh, yeah, the windmill. I'm like, these ain't been against no scrub-ass teams. Like, these, these are, this has been, you know, creme de la creme. So I don't really, you know, I ain't. That's why, to me, the game, you know, I'm not. I can't really see a positive outcome considering you beat this team five times already. They're even more hurt than you're hurt. You're at home. Yeah, I, I don't like I, like with with all right. Like like I don't. You should win this game tomorrow. Through, huh? You should win this game yeah, tomorrow. You, you should win this game tomorrow. We're going away. Like you should win this game tomorrow. Going away. So and you got fresh legs because two of your. Well, no, three of your five starters got benched in the fourth. <laughs> so you got fresh legs. So uh, that's why I'm just like, man, I, I just, to me, it's a lose-lose. You go out, you beat the dog shit out of them. Okay, yay, you, you overcame adversity. There really was no adversity to overcome, but you overcame adversity. Now you're in a series that you probably don't have much chance of winning if uh, OKC is healthy. If you lose... Oh, well, it's because Zion went out. How did, you know, Brandon's coming back from injury. You know, Jonas had the, had a cold. You know, Hawkins was on the bench all month. You know, it's just we got these ready-made excuses, like just sitting there to provide cushion. And that's why I'm just like, I, I really can't see a good scenario. The, the best positive you can really hope for is that Brandon and CJ play incredible and you lose. So they got incredible trade value going into this offseason. And even then, you still going to say, well, all we needed was Zion, that one missing piece. And it's like, no, if Zion would have played, more than likely Brandon wouldn't have played well because they don't play well together. That's the, that's why tomorrow don't matter. 
because they don't play well together. It's all about them two playing well together. CJ is like the, you know, the stepchild in this situation because he's the one who's always going to get replaced theoretically. But it's about these two playing well together. And not only did they not play well together, this motherfucker got benched. He ain't just played bad. He got benched. Benched. Hold on. And now, and now, and now, gotta, and now he's got to come back and win and now, the ball and, now he gotta, and now he got to come back third game since, you know, his injury back. At least it's against a familiar foe he's had some success against. But it's just like, what you supposed to... Like what you supposed to really take away from the, like this game? Yeah, I you mean, know, you know, it's look, tough, I'm man. always gonna, I'm always gonna see it. I mean, I'm always gonna want to win. I want to see a playoff series. Um, predictions, I guess. Lito, go ahead. What do you, what do you got for tomorrow? Hey, before I give you my prediction, Chad said something about. Okay. Uh, Chad said something about a big three, and I, you know, we talked about Zion's attitude. Zion needs to. There, there, there was a prophet. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this brother Justin, but he's a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> out of uh, he's out of Compton, California, and um, you know, very recently he had a quote in um, in reference to Chaz's big three quote. You know, the brother said, um, you know, motherfuck the big three, uh, brother, it's just big me, and um, I think that attitude should be adopted by by young young Zion. Uh, predictions. I think that the Pelicans are going to beat an NBA team for the sixth time. How many times? How many times does that happen in a year? Well, I, the play in the NBA kind of like question. exist, so it's probably it's never happened. Yeah. Pro- yeah. It'd probably be something this like before it? the merger of the ABA or something like that. Okay, so you think uh, they win tomorrow, Lito? I do. I do. I don't think that's the best thing for the Pelicans to win, honestly. But I, I do think that they that they do win the game. Sure. Um, hmm, I don't know, bro. Uh, you're playing with fire, bro. To beat somebody six times is is very very tough. Um, I don't know what the Pelicans. That they're probably like the hardest team to predict. I think a lot of NBA people say that a lot. Like you don't know what this team's gonna be night in, night out, and that almost gives them grace and a built-in excuse, right? Like you, because you don't know what they're gonna be. So I'm gonna just go. I'm gonna ride with them. Uh, the Pelicans are gonna get a win, and they're gonna play OKC in the first round. I agree. I think like. Chaz, I get it. I, I totally understand what you're saying because the whole point of this here was to see how Zion and Brandon played in the playoffs. Like that's this is the whole idea, or even throughout the whole year, they, they didn't play well together. Um, you know, a lot of guys like numbers show they did not play very well together. Um, I'm pretty sure. I, I Bro, just up. how many times are you go ask this question? You've asked this question four times. We are fucking negative. Next question. <laughs> hey. Hey Justin, hold on. Before you continue, I used to I used to tell my girl this all the time. Like you don't just wake up and start like like you know what if we get married and we go buy a house? You don't just wake up and just be a cook. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't wake up and just be a mother, right? Mm -hmm. Like you better do the stuff that you want to do now. Like later, you better start doing it now. Even if you're bad at it, you better start doing it now. If we if we're gonna just say, hey, let's just get to the playoffs and we're gonna operate in a totally different fashion, that is that's asinine, bro. That's asinine, that's arrogance, to be honest. You think that you're gonna play better in the playoffs and you haven't played well in the regular season? Like we just we just wishing this would happen. You have no proof that it will. You have nothing to hang your hat on like. This team's gonna play well in the playoffs. They have they operate well in the half court set. No, they don't. Up, uh, they play with a lot of energy. So does everybody else. Everybody else turns up the energy. Everybody else plays harder on defense in the playoffs. What are you gonna do to combat that? <laughs> I don't even know where I was at. 
I'm just all I know is that uh, I, I got Pelicans by 15. Also, I think they win tomorrow if they give OKC. Do y'all think Zion's done for the year? Yes. I don't even know why he was in the huddle and in, in the photo. That, so that made, weird. I thought that, that made was me so weird. That he made. I, I don't know. I, I don't think that's. I mean, he was that's like it. in shorts. Like I'm not saying like yeah. I'm look. I'm not mm-hmm. saying anything. I'm just saying like I thought that was weird. Because because no, no no I don't think it's weird. Why? Maybe he's taking ownership. Okay. Mm. Maybe. Maybe okay. maybe he feels totally like fair. yeah like. I like you not supposed to be there with the dudes. Maybe you did your your pre work with your um with your physical therapist or whoever uh, is your overseer there. And like fuck it, I'm gonna go out there on the side of the court and I'm gonna be in the huddles. I'm gonna be yeah. attentive. I'm gonna be alert. I'm gonna make sure like everybody in the right place because it's my my team. That's another thing though. You got a new trainer uh, who's been excellent this year. So shout out, shout, shout out, out to Amy Atmore. Shout out <coughs> Amy Atmore for sure. Yeah. Why? Why don't we know, Justin? Why don't we know? You, you said something earlier. I know you're trying to end the show, but like you said, you said something about <laughs> like you had like 200 shows with me or something like that. Go yeah, ahead. man. You, know what I'm um, you said something about we don't know the severity of the sprain of the, of the strain. strain. Yeah, that's not a little crazy. Like, why, why we don't know? I mean, I don't that. It's an interesting thing, right? Like, you don't have to, like, on an NBA injury report, right? You don't have to. What do you, I don't, I, I'm asking, I don't know the rules. We, we didn't even know really yeah. got an extension. There you go. What that's, are we talking about? <laughs> five. That's what, that's where I was going. Thank you, Five. Thank you. It's a low class. <laughs> this is low class, low rate, man. And, um, I, I hope Adam Silver get involved at some point and just, uh, <laughs> Launch an investigation, bro, because this is this is this is crazy, and it's it's with both organizations. I mean, Marshawn Lattimore got hurt. I ain't I, I forgot Marshawn Marshawn Lattimore played for the Saints. I ain't seen this dude for like nine weeks, and it was like, oh, it's some kind of ankle injury. It's like that. Well, that's vague. Um, Michael I, Thomas for years. I mean, yeah, it's Del- it's, it's it was like, Delvin Bro, but there was somebody before Delvin Bro, too. Well, well like the rest uh, of the injury. Delvin bro, yeah, Sean Payton fucked over Delvin bro, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's I don't know, bro. It's it's par for the course with this organization. Um, I ain't gonna lie, I, I'm I'm I don't know, man. Don't know. Bro, Lewis. can can you? Can oh, Keenan you, Lewis. Keenan Lewis. Is there has there been any other? Is there any other situation where a team who is confident in their head coach has not only not announced? The contract extension, but literally do it the year prior to and kept it silent. Like you never plan on announcing it ever. What the fuck, it, dog? What, dog? That's not crazy to nobody. It was just supposed to keep running like a, a long ass series. Like, damn, this season ten. Like, this is a rewrite. Yeah, yeah like what? this show. Ain't, this show and, still on. And, and, and y'all just sure. going. Y'all just going to switch and view, and nobody going to say nothing. Yeah, yeah like, like let it ride. All right. Uh, that's definitely a discussion. Uh, we out of my notes. Once the season ends, we're gonna have definitely a discussion of ownership and and what needs to change. And 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 by the way, last I want to say this: Jared has a poll out right now on his Twitter. We need everybody to make sure you participate and fill out that uh, that poll. <laughs> I wish we could put out the. Uh, you could have said survey, honestly. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> go ahead. You know what? Go ahead, Leo. Five, <laughs> just go. Just do the five seconds, Leo. Just go. Just go. Bob, you about to say something? Nah, man, fill out the survey, bro. I need it for fill class. Fill out the fucking survey. <laughs> <laughs> don't, Go ahead, uh, Lito. Don't, don't do the thing that Justin said. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Other than that, uh, man, listen, listen, from us to y'all, we just want to say uh, we appreciate y'all for pulling up all these pies, bro. Every pie for, what, it was 79 games? We no, we've done eighty one. Eighty three. We've done eighty one. We've, we've done a couple. We mixed. I think no, we've done. We've we've missed three post game recaps. I think it was like a Pacers one, uh, um, a Portland one, and something else. Found the preseason. But, but, fuck that. But but dog, we've done we've done like stuff like this where we've done it on off days. Yeah. So like, 
I mean, that's true. That's true, dog. And, and you got the and you got on individual shows. You know what I'm saying? Like, shout out to that boy Five, man. Five doing shows now, man. Pull up on my dog, watch his shit. Um, Chaz always going platinum. You know what I'm saying? In every hood. And shout out to Chris and, and Ross, man. But listen, we we just want to say we appreciate y'all and thank y'all for pulling up to everything. You know what I'm saying? Everything that we do. And I want to say too, man. Like I appreciate the panel. I appreciate Justin Five. Chris Ross, I appreciate La La. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause still, st- still sharp and still, still sharp and still, Justin and 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 for real, like you listen to, you listen to vernacular, you listen to uh, lingo, you listen to people dissect plays, you listen to you watch certain things, and you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we do. Like, you get better. Like, you're trying to get better for the analysis, and and you want to become a better fan and a better basketball viewer. So you know what I'm saying? Like, we working too. Well said. Appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all smash the like button. We'll see y'all tomorrow night.